In this video, you're going to learn how to solve polynomial inequalities using a number line and factoring and test intervals and sign analysis. So it sounds a little bit more complicated than it actually is. We're going to go through three examples and let's dive in. So the first one, say we wanted to solve this polynomial inequality. Let's go ahead and follow the steps here. The first step is you want to get everything on one side of the inequality and set it to zero. So you can see that's already the case here in this first example. The second step is you want to factor and set the factors equal to zero. So we already know about how to factor. Uh, you just say what two numbers multiply to negative 24 but add to negative 2. And so that would be negative 6 and positive 4. Then we're going to set each of these factors or each of these groups equal to zero. So x minus 6 equals zero and x plus 4 equals zero. Add 6 to both sides. Subtract 4 from both sides. Now you want to plot the zeros on the number line from lowest to highest. So if you think about a number line like this, here's negative 4 and here's 6, so low to high. And then what you're going to do now is you're going to notice that this is a less than but not equal to. So less than means that this is going to be open. It doesn't include negative 4. It doesn't include 6. If it was equal to, we'd make this a closed circle or a filled in circle. Now we want to test the intervals using sign analysis, meaning we're going to pick a test point here, here, and here, these three regions. So say, for example, if we test like negative 5. Okay, I'm going to put it into this factored form. So negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. So I'm just going to put a negative. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So I'm going to put a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. If I pick a test interval here, say like 0, or test point here, 0 minus 6 is negative 6, which is negative. 0 plus 4 is positive 4. That's positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. So we'll put negative in this interval. And then if we pick a number here, say for example 7, 7 minus 6 is 1, that's positive. 7 plus 4 is 11, that's positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. And we're looking for this is less than 0, meaning where is it negative. So it's going to be negative right here. So you can write this in that interval notation as negative 4 to 6, not including negative 4 or 6. That's why we're using the parentheses. Or if you're still using the inequality notation, you could say x is greater than negative 4 and less than 6 like that. And the idea here is that you could actually graph this parabola. And what this would look like is it would look something like this. And we're looking for where it's less than zero, meaning where is it below the x-axis? So it's negative here, meaning below the x-axis between negative 4 and 6. It's equal to zero right at negative 4 and 6, and it's above the x-axis or positive when you're to the right of 6 or to the left of negative 4. But here we were interested in less than zero, so we're interested in where it's negative. This is just a quicker way of doing it by analyzing it on the number line instead of having to graph the whole graph. So let's take a look at another example. For number two, let's go through the steps. So how do we do this one? Well, the first step is you want to get everything on one side and set it to zero. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So if I do that, that's going to give us x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, step number two, we want to factor and set the factors equal to zero. Now this one, we have four terms when we factor or you can usually think about the factoring by grouping technique. So if I group these and factor out the greatest common factor, I get x squared. Here, if I group these and factor out a negative 4, and notice we have an x plus 3 in common. If I factor out the x plus 3, we're left with x squared minus 4. And this is a difference of two squares. We can factor it as x plus 2 and x minus 2. Okay, now we want to set the factors equal to 0. So x plus 3, if we set that equal to 0, subtract 3, we're going to get negative 3. Set this equal to 0 and solve, we're going to get negative 2. Set this to 0 and solve, we're going to get a positive 2. So we want to plot these on the number line from lowest to highest. So negative 3, negative 2, and 2 is over here greater than or equal to zero, so it would be equal to zero at each of these 
zeros at negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. So those are going to be uh, closed circles, okay? And we're going to pick a test point in each of these intervals. Now, in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 intervals. So let's start with like a negative 4. So if we put a negative 4 in, we're going to get negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1, or negative. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, which is negative. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6, which is negative. Three negatives multiplied together give us a negative, right? Say we do negative 2.5. That's going to give us a positive, that's going to give us a negative, and a negative. So this comes out to a positive, because you have the two negatives cancel and give us a positive. So we'll write plus here. Say we do zero in this interval, that's going to give us a positive three, a positive two, and a negative two. So that's going to multiply positive times positive times negative, which is a negative. And let's say we pick like three over here, that's going to give us positive, 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 which is positive. And we're interested in where it's greater than or equal to zero, meaning where it's positive or zero. That's going to be here and here. So if we write that in interval notation, that's going to go from negative 3 to negative 2, including negative 3 and negative 2, union from positive 2, including 2, all the way to positive infinity. You can't reach infinity. That's an open interval. And that's your solution. Let's take a look at uh, one more example. See if you can pause the video and try this one on your own. So how would you solve this polynomial inequality? Well, if I was going to do it, I would get everything on one side and set it to zero. That's our first step. So if I subtract 10 from both sides of this inequality, what do we get? We get 3x squared minus x minus 10 is greater than zero. Okay, step number two, we want to factor and set the factors to zero. So if I factor this, how would this factor? So it's kind of like doing the FOIL uh, backwards here. You could say 3x times 1x is 3x squared. And let's see, uh, negative 2 and positive 5 multiplies to negative 10. And the 5x and the negative 6x adds up to the middle term, negative 1x. Now if we set the factors to zero and solve, let's see what we get. We get 3x plus 5 equals zero and x minus 2 equals 0. If we subtract 5 from both sides and divide both sides by 3, you can see x is equal to negative 5 thirds. And here, if we add 2 to both sides, x equals 2. OK, so now we want to go to our number line and plot them from lowest to highest. So negative 5 thirds would be over here. And 2 is going to be over here. And we have greater than but not equal to zero. So that means these are going to be open. So it doesn't include these points. It would be equal to zero at those two points. We're looking for where it's greater than zero or positive. So if we do some test points, say, for example, a negative 2 and 0 and 3, let's see what we get. So if we put negative 2 into our factored form, this would be negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1. Or I'll just write a negative here. And negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. That's negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. We put 0 in. We get 3 times 0 is 0. Plus 5 is 5. That's positive. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. That's negative. A positive times a negative is negative. If we put 3 in, we get 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 5 is 14. That's positive. 3 minus 2 is 1. That's positive. And a positive times a positive is a positive. We want to know where it's greater than zero, meaning where it's positive, right? So that's going to be right here and right here. OK, so if we write this in interval notation from negative infinity all the way to negative 5 thirds, not including negative 5 thirds because that's open, so we use the parenthesis, union from 2, not including 2, so we use the parenthesis, all the way to positive infinity. You can never reach infinity. That's an open interval on that end. And this is your final result. So great job if you were able to get that problem. If you want more practice, follow me over to the video I did talking about the same concept previously uh, in that video right there. So go ahead and click on that video and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.